Okay, so um, we're gonna get started. How many people do we have in the house? We have 10. Oh, hey, hi, 10 folks, including us or excluding us? Including us. Oh, great, awesome. Um, so I, um, I, I think we can get started. Awesome. Okay, so if you're here, hi everybody. So Nepal or Nakiri to you guys. Hi, um, I'm Mei Mei. I'm also known as Lahaina in the professional world. Um, I'm also known as Chukis Goddess Online. Um, welcome to this space. Um, we are so honored to have you all here. And I apologize that we started so late. Um, I had some technical issues getting in. Um, but yes, I, we're very honored to have you guys on board with us. Um, we're, we're limited to um, one hour and 30 minutes here. So uh, we're not gonna, um, we're gonna try to like kind of go through our agenda. Um, we're gonna try to go according to our agenda. Um, so because uh, we're going to be doing a lot of um, talking or like a, a lot of storytelling, we would appreciate if everyone is on mute. Um, we, we have um, open dialogue uh, session. So that's when we open up uh, the, um, that's when we open up the thing to everyone. You can uh, um, you can unmute well, if you want if you want to join in on the in the open dialogue ses um, sessions. Um, but yeah, um, so the, our agenda. I'm just gonna go through this agenda real quick so we can um, so everybody everyone is aware of what how, how this is gonna play out. Um, so for introduction, if I can have, if you're, if you have a pen, if you don't have a pen, it's okay too. But if you have a pen next to you or a paper, or you can write it in your hand, you can just write your name, um, and your, um, your, your name, your island and a favorite food. If you have a lot of favorite food, just write one of them and then hold it up to the camera, um, so that we can go through and look at who's here, what your favorite foods are and all that and all that. Um, but yes, so introduction, my name is May, like I said, I am from the islands of Chuk and my current favorite food is um, taro ground, ground, no, grated taro in coconut milk. That's my current favorite food. Um, and uh, also, oh, I said it were, I said to choose one, but actually I, feel like I should also share another favorite food um, and that's milk bread. I love milk bread and I just recently discovered them. Um, I'm gonna pass on the introduction to my other co-hosts, uh, Nellyn and uh, Britt. Uh, Britt, you can go after uh, Nellyn. I mean, you can go before Nellyn. All right, okay. Hey everyone, my name is Brittany, so I am the creator of Micronesian Viral. And basically, I am from the islands of Kushai. Yep. And by marriage, I'm from Marsha Islands and Kiribati. <laughs> and so my favorite foods, well, sorry, I forgot to say Mogetlin, Lenwo, and Yakwe. And um, my favorite foods right now is I love eating fried fish and sweet potatoes or yams. So I like to dip it in um, shoyu or kikoman soy sauce, lime, Tabasco. Sometimes I add in, you know, kimchi base. So yeah, that's pretty much what I love. So I'm going to pass it on to Nels. Thank you, ladies. Um, hi, everyone. name or Nipogani, now that it's late. Uh, my name is Nels, or you can call me Nelly. I'm known as Beauty Mark uh, Nelly on Instagram, also a baddie in real life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, only one favorite food? That's hard. Um, I guess if we stick to the islands, I love um, pirawa, so like baked bread uh, with coffee. First of all, get your coffee or your tea ready because this is going to be a lot of 
tea spilling and sharing. Um, and also taro. I love taro. Anything with coconut milk, with my heart. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, can you guys hear me? I'm <laughs> very technology challenged. Um, so because we we don't have as many people that signed, so there were like 20 some people, almost 30 people that signed up. So I was thinking maybe not go through the introduction with everyone since, you know, it's going to be crazy, but we have a few enough people that we can go through this introduction with everybody else. So I'm just going to call on people um, as I go through the screen. And if I butcher your name, I'm sorry. So uh, first up is DR, um, if, if you can go right now. Hi, uh, my name is Deshaun. I'm from Zouk, uh, and my favorite food is anything with uh, cod or like breadfruit. Uh, I like it, especially uh, uput or mar, it's like when it's fermented. I like the really tangy ones. So yeah, thank you. Yay, local boy. <laughs> we have Sonia. Hello, I'm from Oahu, and um, oh, there's it's so hard to pick one food. <laughs> My favorite go-to is kimchi raw poke dipped in poi. It's my favorite. <laughs> um, awesome. And then next up, we have Emily or M. Hi everyone, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Emily. I'm from the island of Chuk. Um, I don't have a favorite because they're all my favorite. <laughs> like I love the foods in Chuk. So whatever it is, I'll eat it. I'll try it. I'll be like, mm. I'm a very island woman. So I'm just like, that everything's my favorite there. So yeah. Awesome. Cool. And then next, we're going to Mel. Hello. Hi, my name is Mel, also known as Melba. I am also from the island of Chuk, specifically from the island of Nema, outer island of Chuk, very tiny island. My favorite food it would be ripe bananas with coconut milk on top. Thank you. That's one of mine too. <laughs> um, and then next we have Verna. Hi, my name is Verna Sally. I'm from Chu. And my favorite local food would be fish sashimi with guan. Thank you. And then we have Lorraine. Hi, my name is Lorraine. I'm from the island of Chuk, specifically Lukuno. My favorite food is amat or grinded yes. like tapioca and banana and stuff. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, so I think that's everyone. Uh, everyone. And then we're gonna move on to what's next. Oh, so we're moving on to explaining what the dialogue is. So I'm gonna go first and then I'm gonna pass it to Brid. Um, so Micronesian dialogue was born out of um, basically um, us Micronesian not really having a space or platform where we can tutuna. Um, and tutunab is the uh, Chuggies word for telling stories, right? To, to talk stories. Um, and I love tutunab because I grew up on tutunab. And then I want to pass it on to my folks. And usually I, I do a lot of that online. Uh, but um, like my life, a lot of things on my page is random. So I want a specific space that's dedicated to tutunab. Um, and so it was also born out of uh, me getting invited to a lot of spaces where people want me to tell stories. They want me to tell my story or they, they want me to tell stories of Micronesians. And many, sometimes I feel like I'm 
always, I'm the token person or the token Micronesian in these spaces. People want to fill in the, they want to fill in this void and have a Micronesian representation on there. So they're like, hey, you want to come and tell a story, you know, so all those kind of combine and inspire me to just get into this and create this space for us where we can come together and uh, tell our stories or talk stories or discuss things. Um, so that's how the Micronesian Dialogue was born. Um, and now I'm gonna pass it to Britt who will tell us um, how and um, why she uh, was so kind enough to be on board with this idea. All right. So um, first of all, thank you so much, Mei Mei and Nell, so for inviting me to do this. It's so I feel so honored. You know, when they reached out to me, they're like, um, it was Mei Mei who, who reached out to me, and she's like, oh, what do you think of doing a Micronesian dialogue for women? And of course, I was like, why not? <laughs> and so um, basically, I think the main reason why I was open to it is because I just love being surrounded by other Micronesian people, especially people that I can relate to. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know, but I was born and raised in Hawaii. And um, I do, I did, I do grow up with Micronesian people. Um, but now being a mom, I'm not only just a mom, I also work from home. And I, um, I'm basically all over the place. You know, and so being able to get to know other Micronesian women, network with them, talk stories, and learn more about other people's stories, it really inspires me. So um, I don't know if you guys heard of that saying called, you put a fish in a, a bowl, it will grow. It will grow big, but if you put it in the ocean, it will maximize on, you know, that amount that they're in, whatever their environment is in. And so me being surrounded by, maybe not surrounded in person, but virtually, it helps me to grow because not only do I learn how to become, or how to become more educated on our Micronesian culture, but it also allows me to grow as a person and um, just hearing from these young ladies and other people that we're gonna hear in the future, it just motivates me to be better. So that's why I was super open to it. And I'm excited for um, what we have to come in the future. So that's pretty much how it started. Yes, um, I just want to uh, throw some more salt on there. Um, so uh, originally this was gonna be, um, this was gonna be, um, this was gonna start at the beginning of March, but you know, because of everything that's been going on and organizations and life. So um, we start today, but it's gonna keep going. Um, we're thinking that maybe it will be a monthly thing. Um, and because March is International Women's Month, um, the, these first two sessions um, are, um, most of the stories are surrounding like strong women and stories of women. Uh, but then going forward, uh, we would love to have, we, we, are, we would love to hold spaces for also our Micronesian men because they also have super important things to talk about. Um, so yeah, and we're also inspired by you, uh, by our Micronesian men as well um, as our women. Uh, so yeah, so going forward, it's gonna be each month with a different, kind of a different topic but it's going to be a mix of stories of exp travel experiences or just experiences in general. And then uh, because I am a fanatic of folklores and legends, we are gonna be doing a lot of legends too. Um, and like I said, this space is for us all. So it's open, like we're not gonna be the ones always telling the stories. We will tell stories if there's like, we don't have anybody to tell the stories, but uh, Going forward, we're gonna open up the space for people to tell their stories. So if you know a legend that you wanna tell, if you have a cool thing that happened yesterday or five years ago, six years ago, 10 years ago that you wanna talk about, uh, feel free, uh, let us know, slide into the DMs, email us, or just um, let us know like while we're doing the thing, like, hey, I have, I have a five minute story or I have a 10 minute story and we'll put you on the program or on the list. Um, but yes, so we're gonna, 
open up the space now to dialogue. And then after the dialogue, we'll, uh, we'll move into um, our story for today. Uh, for those of you who are following on Instagram and Facebook, um, I posted uh, the preview of the story that we're going to be doing today. And that is the story of Nemwis. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, most of our Chukis audience have heard of the story of Nemwis who is the Yappies girl who was able to walk on water. But guess what? Her magic got burned out by the Chukis because we're good at magic. <laughs> so, so that's the story that we're going to tell today. Uh, but before the story, we're going to get into dialogue and open up the space for um, any of you, if you guys have anything to say so far. Um, just feel free to just talk because now I cannot see who's uh, where. So just jump into the conversation. Also, don't forget, you can utilize the chat box. If you're shy to speak, you can just write what you want to say. While you guys are warming up, um, we have another person who just joined, uh, our cousin Coco. If you can introduce yourself, uh, your name, your island, and a favorite food, that would be amazing. Hi, um, my name is Erico, but I go by Coco. Um, my family and I are from the island of Chuuk. My favorite food is fried chicken <laughs> and rice. And um, good evening on my side, it's 7 p.m. I was gonna say good morning because <laughs> I see some sunshine in some places. Awesome, thank you, Coco. Um, so we're kind of shy, it's the first day, so it's okay if we don't get into the dialogue right away. Um, but if you guys have anything, just go ahead and type it in the box. Um, but I'm going to start um, getting myself ready to start telling my story. But if you guys have anything to say, just interrupt me because right now I'm going to get into story mode. So this story is an original like Chukis folklore or like it's told to us as kids. And then we grow up and we tell our kids. Uh, but my story, the story of Nemwis that I have here, it is a animated and a, um, I wrote the story, like I added onto the story and then I made it uh, my story. So if you're like hearing my story and you're like, wait, that did not happen in the story. Uh, first of all, you did not know that, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay, so we're getting into the story. Um, so before you tell a story back in the day, or before you give any speech at all, this is how you start in the Chukis culture. So, Tirorang, Tiropun, Tirobatai, and Tirowabibadising. My name is Lahaina Philip, and prior to my big move to Oregon 10 years ago, I was on the islands of Chuk where I grew up. Storytelling is an essential part of my culture, the Chukis culture. It was a significant part of my upbringing. In Chuk, there is a story to almost everything, whether it's the islands themselves or a lagoon or a certain big rock down the street, there is always a legendary explanation on why and how that thing came about. For example, there is a rock named Ferzab on the islands of Udet. There is a story behind why the rock is there and why there is a little stream on the sand behind, beside that rock. Today, I am going to tell you guys the story of the legendary 12 feet tall maiden who used to possess one of the most unique and most magnificent, magnificent talent. Way back in the olden days of magic, there lived, there lived a maiden by the name of Nemwes on the island of Yap. I don't know which island, but they just said she was from Yap. She was the daughter of the high chief. Nemwes loved flowers and she was known as the best in making marmar or flower headdresses. She spent her days weaving together tea leaves, plumeria and hibiscus flowers to make good smelling and beautiful marmar. Marmar were the jewelries of the islands. She would finish the headdresses and distribute them throughout the villages to her elders as a sign of respect. 
And sometimes she would give one to anyone that she fancy. One day, Nemus realized that she has become bored with the flowers she gathered from the island. It was downing on her that she has been working with the same stuff every day. She wanted new things, new flowers. She then decided to set out on an adventure to go gather flowers from yonder. She wanted to go to nearby islands. Before she set off, she decided to go consult her grandmother for some magic. On that day, Nemus' grandmother bestowed upon her the most, unique, the most unique gift in all the land. She was given a magic potion that could enable her to walk on the surface of the ocean. Surface of the ocean, yes. Nemus was ecstatic. This was rare. She became the only one who possessed the type, this type of magic. On that day, Nemus started to go to the nearby islands to gather flowers. Her headpieces now had more variety and smelled even better. The fair maiden was very happy. Time goes on and Nemwa started to become bored again. The flowers became the same and she had grown tired of the smell. This time she wanted new flowers and new smell. She, she went to her dad, the chief of the island and consult him to go beyond the reefs. She asked her dad, dad, I'm here because I want to go beyond the reefs. I want to go to the nearby islands. What is beyond these reefs here? She asked the dad. The dad said, no, you are not to go out there. That is dangerous. You are not to go beyond our own reefs. Nemwes grew tired and grew bored and grew very sad because all she could think about is what kind of flowers is beyond? What kind of flowers is beyond this reef? Day in and day out, she goes back to the dad and ask her and ask him for permission to go off the island. Finally, she decided one day she was gonna set out on her journey beyond the reef, even after her dad instructed specifically not to go. Beyond the reefs are the islands of Chuk. There, people were known to have the most powerful magic, including black magic. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> They had the strongest love potion that will make you fall in love instantly. They possess magic that could transport you from your local kitchen into the clouds where villages cook, where villages go to go prepare meals when they don't want people to see what goes into the recipe. Nemus did not know this. So she went, she set out. She set out into the islands of Chuk and from island to island until she arrived on the shores of Udet. On Udet, people pound con in the clouds. That's an extraordinary magic that they possess. As, as the islanders do with every visitors, they saw Nemwes and they welcomed her. They welcomed her into their community and gave her a feast. They feasted and they fed her con, they fed her fish, more con, more fish, and more con. Nemwes was so happy. She had never seen so many variety of flowers, especially the white ginger. That was what she was, that's that's what she that was what she had been looking for. She collected all the flowers to her heart's content until until she was satisfied. And then she said goodbye to the islanders of Udud and set out to go. She took one step into the ocean and she sank. She went back to shore, put on her potion and went back out into the ocean and there she sank again. At this time, she started to realize that things, there might be something fishy going on. So she went back, emptied her bottle of potion onto her feet and then set out again. For the third time, she sank. Then she quickly realized that she might be losing her ability to walk on the ocean. She went back to the shore and she sat down and she recounted the times when her dad told her not to forbid him by going beyond the reef. 
she sat down there and she cried and cried and kicked the sand out where she was sitting. Months go by, months go by and the Islanders of Yap are starting to get worried, especially the father. So the father sent the brothers to go look for Nemwis. The brothers turned themselves into sharks and then they went to the island of Utet. Upon arrival, they had heard the story that Nemwis had died of depression because of losing her magic. There is a rock on the shores of Utet where Nemwis was kicking the sand, where you, to this day, you can see this rock and you can see this lump of sand where Nemwis was kicking and there's a stream and rumor has it that the stream comes from the tears of Nemwis. The sharks went back to Yap and reported to the father. The father died of depression as well. And so did the brothers. The end. <laughs> this is not a very uh, uh, happy ending, but it's one of my favorite stories because of the magic. Um, I wonder how many of the Chukis know this story and how many of you are mad at me for changing the story? I mean, I feel like I've heard uh, a similar version before where, uh, you know, the, there's a girl that walked on water and she traveled to all these lands. But I think the version what I heard was she had all these flowers and she planted them on these lands. And that's why there's these certain flowers in these lands. It, you know, stories change as they go on. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, there is um, there is a book that has that story. Um, where's the book? Oh, so there's this book that has the story, um, and it has the exact thing that you're saying. I don't want to read this book because the story in here is written by foreigners, um, and I know that it's the stories that they heard from our people, but um, still, I don't want to read it because it's from like you know a foreign point of view. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in learning more of these stories, they're in this book. Um, I will put it in the chat so that you guys can uh, go look at it. Coco, you said you also heard the story the same way, huh? Yeah, um, mom used to tell me this story a lot when we were growing up um, as a way to tell us, it's like a, a lesson for us to listen to her. <laughs> But she would use and be like, you see, she didn't listen to her family and look what happened. She got stuck on it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I've heard similar versions, but I like your version also. I also like how you pointed out that they died of depression because it kind of raises a conversation about that with like our people. And it just shows like how I like how the, the father and the dad were all like, you could just see how much they loved her and cared about her as the daughter. I'm not sure if she's like the only daughter, but I can see that like, this might be too personal, but like me and my dad get along really well. So like, I could see him being super sad. I hope he would be super sad if I was stranded on an island, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for sharing Coco. Maybe I don't know if I missed the part of um, where where the the leader or the chief from Yap sent out something like a fish or something to look for the daughter. It was the turtle. Was the turtle? Okay, I don't know if I missed that part because I have a uh, internet issues here. But yeah, uh, I used to hear that you, story too. Yeah, in. no, you didn't. I, I, I use sharks instead of turtles um, because sharks are more fierce than turtles because the, the original story is that the islanders took the turtle, they ate the turtle, the, they sent back the shell of the turtle. Uh, that was the original story. Oh, okay. And it's in here too. That story is in here. And it was just one turtle. But then I was also hearing a story where the brothers went. So I was like, okay, brothers, sharks. Okay, that's, that's, that sounds cooler. Okay, sharks. We can also embrace the the bravery of the turtle, though, for oh. eating off. You know what I mean? 
So if you do consider yourself a turtle, you are welcome in this space and your strength is something else too. I just wanted to add that. Very Thanks. Very nice, Nell. That's a good point. That's a good mm -hmm. point. I just I feel embarrassed for my discrimination. Sorry, guys. No, I feel I, I kind of see your point of view. I mean, uh, my perspective on it is like because it, it's it comes from a book written by others, it kind of paints like a different narrative. Like you said, they ate the turtle and they sent the shell back. It kind of makes us look like you know. Right, it's it's the it's the foreigner's narrative. It paints as a different picture. Like to us, it would it wouldn't be that big a deal because I mean, uh, we love turtle, turtle too. Yeah, I love turtle. But then, like I mentioned it to some of my friends out here, and they're like, "Turtles? We're supposed to save the turtles?" And it, it it's a whole thing. I hear you. Um, uh, one of our sisters told us that her one of her friends actually cried. Um when she told her that oh my god turtles are so yummy so the friend just looked at her and started crying because she's like how can you eat such a cute thing um yeah i feel bad for eating turtle but i love turtle at the same time and i think it's just really important for all of us to just keep an open mind you know that some stuff are eaten by other people and then some stuff are not eaten by other people and I, I never eat turtle outside of Chuk. Like I only eat it in Chuk because I feel like that's the safest space I can eat turtles. Um, outside of Chuk, like that might be disrespectful to other people. So I just don't do it. And honestly, because it's like, mostly it's all my white friends that are, are like that. Uh, it's, it's not our fault that the turtles are dying. Like we eat it because of cultural reasons, but there's, there's things to it too. We don't just go out when we feel like eating turtle there's like pro there's yeah. a whole process you gotta talk to the chief yeah. go through it but they're the ones throwing straws in the ocean so it's i i, I don't i don't feel, it's not our, it's not ours to blame so that's what I, that's how i feel on it that's valid um i don't know sonia is kind of quiet but i would love to hear from sonia because i know that turtles are a sacred animal in hawaii or in the hawaiian culture so if you could just enlighten us, please. I would really appreciate it. I have nothing to enlighten you with. <laughs> I I have heard that um, you guys eat turtle, but I mean, Alaskan seals, and it's just something that your community has to survive. It's not like you knew plastic was going to come and endanger the turtle population, you know? <laughs> like yeah, and, and like he he has a really good point that you guys aren't responsible for a, the climate catastrophe that's happening against turtles like it's the bigger picture so it i mean some people hold chicken sacred and we eat that gladly or fish and crab and frogs and <laughs> whatever you know different people eat different things and i know for a lot of native people even like in alaska they get so much slack for eating whales and it's like that's what they eat and how do you expect them to survive? It was made to sustain them, you know? So yeah, I don't really have <laughs> any issue. Yeah, that. thank you, Sonia, for sharing. And that's really valid. And Deshaun, that's super valid. Like, you know, I'm glad that you are able to speak out about your culture and like, you know, um, cause I think a lot of people, um, there's a lot of judgments everywhere in the world anyway. Um, but I feel like if you have courage to like stand up for yourself and explain where you're coming from, then that's not only, um, you're not only defending yourself, but you're also telling people about your culture, right? So that's really amazing. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so I just would like to add on that. Um, the turtle is actually really important. We eat the turtle, but it's also very important. We um, eat, the whole turtle and then the shell of the turtle, we use it. It's actually, um, it used to be, no, it still is one of the most valuable jewelry um, in Chuk. Um, there is a saying um, called so um, it basically means like, like the turtle shell of my heart or, or something like that, right? But it's, um, that's what um, men used to refer to their, um, um, 
it's a like it's like one of the highest endearing like phrase you can use to describe your lover or your significant other um because like the bots or the um the the turtle shell is a super like it's one of the highest quality of jewelry in the um islands of Chuk or in, in the Chukis culture um so yeah um somebody just said something hold on um use the word yes this yes so basically what i just said but yeah um that's my story and that's um thank you guys for adding on to the um turtle um story or the turtle uh dialogue we are gonna move it into uh an exercise uh by brit um are you there brit Yes, so sorry. I'm using my phone because something happened to my um my iPad. It froze. <laughs> oh, so, no uh, so I love your activity. Um do you want um to start off and then I can ask your questions or ask you the questions? Okay, yeah. You can do that. Okay. Let me give me the heads up when to ask. Okay. And so basically I came up with a few questions and it was um, to connect, you know, this month and the event or the holiday that was up earlier, which was International Women's Month. And so we do thank you for having both men and women on here, really appreciate that. And so can you guys still hear me good? Yeah. Awesome. And so basically, um, before she goes ahead and asks me the question, there was a quote that I wanted to add, you know, following with the turtle, um, you know, how we were talking about the turtle, right? Um, so basically, because I read this page called Micronesian Viral, what I used to do as not just a woman, but as a person in general, is I would just conform to other people's opinions. I would just conform to the whole world or you know what everybody else is doing, everybody, you know, their their mindset. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so basically, um, this quote that I heard before, it was called, do not set yourself on fire just to keep other people warm. And so kind of like, you know, Yappies people, I, I'm not going to lie to you, when I first heard that Yappies people eat turtle, not just Yappies people, Micronesians in general, because I was born and raised in Hawaii, um, I only went to Koshrai when I was like one, I think I was only one year old, so I don't remember much, so it doesn't really count. So when my mom told me, oh, you know, we eat turtle, and I was like, what <laughs> you know I was so shocked you know the cultural shock and you know how everybody they want to make sure that they take care of the turtles in Hawaii it's a very valuable animal and so when she told me that she was like you know your yappy self she's like oh I'm so noble why you say that for you know <laughs> and so basically um I kind of got used to it you know even when she would post pictures online about the you know she even post pictures of them cooking the turtle and everything. And so tying into my activity that I'm about to do um, is basically, it inspires everybody to just be themselves, you know, not conforming to other people's opinions. And, you know, especially being born and raised as Micronesians, I know a lot of us tend to, well, not a lot of us, I would say myself, I don't wanna speak for other people, so a lot of our people wish we're like super super nice you know um for myself even my husband he's like the nicest person on earth so when he says you know they have a hard time saying no to other people or you know because just the way that they're raised we're super hospitalized you know hospi hospitality is number one with um the micronesian culture they like to take care of other people but people tend to forget to take care of themselves. So um, I'm like all over the place, I'm sorry. So 
how that ties in with what I'm about to say, uh, what I'm about to do, the activity is that sometimes we forget to be ourselves, you know, stay true to ourselves and um, remind us why we are here on this earth as a woman, as a man, um, what our purpose is in life. So um, that's just what I wanted to throw in there is do not set yourself on fire in order to keep other people warm. So yeah, that's my introduction of this activity. <laughs> Awesome. So you can go ahead and ask the questions. Nels, you want to ask Britt the questions? Um, do you have them? Nels, are you with us in this seance? I am with you, but uh, I can't pull it up right now. Do you have it? Um, that's why I ask you to do it because I don't have Um okay, so let me ask you, start off, Britt. Um who is a woman that inspires you the most? So basic I would say my mom. <laughs> my mom, she comes from the island of Yap or islands of Yap. Um, she, the village that she was born and raised in was Rumung. And um, honestly, the reason why she inspires me the most is because, you know, with my mom, we do have like a love-hate relationship. You know? <laughs> and so it kind of helped me to become stronger. And with her, if I were like stranded on an island, like a deserted island and if I were to choose anyone to you know help me survive it would be my mom because she knows how to do everything she can cook you know I basically learned how to become a mother from her so she um she's just super strong and also very very humble you know I do notice moments or I experience or witness moments when my mom has indifferences with a lot of people, especially being born and raised in Hawaii. She, because Micronesians in Hawaii are one of the most, um, we get discriminated a lot here. So witnessing her having, um, there were a lot of people who were like super rude to her just because they find out like, oh, you're, she's Micronesian, so maybe we should treat her less. So um, seeing the way that she handled th those adversities, those situations, it inspired me to become patient, you know, kind to others, no matter how much they push you around. She did have, in, you know, she, if it got to a certain point, she would stand up for herself. So that's another attribute that she has. Um, also, she's just very, women are good at multitasking and she's like the master of that. So I learned that from her. Um, and there's this park in here in Oahu, we used to go to Kehi Lagoon and she would just do creative things. It's like she's li living in Yap when we're in Hawaii. She oh. get the tea leaves, yeah. <laughs> and she would just fry the eggs over, like she would start the fire by herself. Like she, I don't know how she does it, awesome. but she does it. <laughs> and so she would, she wouldn't need a grill. She'd use, she just put the tea leaf over the fire and she put the egg inside or she put like a certain type of meat. And when I taste it, I'm like, okay, this is like five-star restaurant material. <laughs> So it's just really, um, also, I don't know, like the best cooking comes from my mom. Like, so when I'm cooking at home for myself and my family, I have two kids. Um, if you guys saw in the picture that I have. So I have a two year, two year old, she's about to be three. Oh no, one year old about to be two, I get mixed up. And then I have my son who just turned three. 
So when I cook for them and I cook for the whole family, <clears throat> I'm like, okay, I'm trying to replicate my mom's recipes. But when it comes to um, eating the recipes from her, it just tastes different. You know, it tastes like home. So that's just the main reason why um, my mom is my inspiration because she just, she's a queen, <laughs> you know? Yes. So I'm super blessed to be able to learn all of those attributes from her. And yeah, I love that question. Actually, I made it, awesome. so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question is, what does International Women's Day mean to you or International Women's Month? Or is it International, International Women's History Month? Am I a woman? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the next question. Okay. So International Women's Month, to me, it's just a whole, you know, a whole pot, like a melting pot, all of us coming together, whether it's networking, through business, you know, just mostly personally coming together and telling each other our stories. Um, the thing I like about this and how we're going to be introducing other Micronesian women and men in the future and just people in general in our community that we know is that we can hear stories from other people. If I can't relate to, for example, Mimi, I can hear from someone like Nels. Um, if we can't relate to them, maybe somebody else can, you know, and it just inspires other people. So International Women's Month or History Month is just women making history with each other, um, becoming more educated on e each other's um, cultures, traditions, just understanding why we are who we are and why, why we do what we do, what is our purpose on this earth. And so, yeah, I think it's just basically all of us coming together and talking stories, just like we are doing today. Yay. Um, so, Britt, I forgot question number three. Do you mind telling us what it is? And then I'll ask you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, I can't remember at the top of my head. What is your we definition? But we have difficulty, so we cannot get into our drive. That's why we're doing this. So sorry, guys. No worries. Okay, so I think I can open it up from here. Okay. Okay. So basically, what are ways that you want to see us Micronesian women rising up together to become trailblazers for our community? So that's the question. Okay, so Britt, what are ways, you know, the question that you just asked? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so basically how I want us Micronesian women to rise up together to become trailblazers for our community is just, simply coming together, helping each other. Um, there, I don't know if you guys know, there's this group that we created um, along with other people or business owners called Micronesian Motivators. So I'm gonna use that as an example. And so that is a networking group with Micronesian business owners, um, mostly small businesses, influencers, artists, creators. And so what we did with that group was um, we basically came together and gave each other ideas. Even though we all came from different, um, we all had like different careers, passions. Like for example, some people were doing media. Some people were doing, um, they were doing art. Um, other people even open up their own barber shop or coffee shop. And so basically we would all share ideas with each other 
And I think that's one of the ways that we can get better. And there's no better way than growing if you're doing it with other people, you know, growing together. It just makes it more fun, you know? And so that's one of the ways that we can come together and rise up is just helping each other out, giving each other wisdom, knowledge, you know, at the same time being super humble. And, you know, Micronesian people, they're the best at hyping each other up. I don't know if you guys notice, whenever I post vid videos on Micronesian viral, I do notice that everybody just loves to, they, they're really great at giving positive comments. They'd be like, yes, sister, yes, bro, I see you. Love your dancing, all of that. Um, this is lit. <laughs> And so they're just super, super, I think that's like our number one thing. Well, number one thing is hospitality, but number two is just my region people are so good at lifting each other up. So if we just continue to do that, we will, it will motivate us to do more and to do better. So those are some ways that we can rise up together. Yep. I agree, Britt. Um, the, so Micronesian Motivators actually uh, introduce um, a lot of people like to each other. So there are people that we don't know that are doing really amazing things. Um, but then through Micronesian Motivators, we got to know them and we just became even more inspired by them. So yeah, the, and that thanks to Britt and another Micronesian girl for creating that. Um, but yeah, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing with us, Britt. Um, I think most of our, well, not, no, I'm going to speak for myself. I was going to, I was going to use my mom as my inspiration too, but you already you said that. Um, I'm pretty sure we have a lot of boss moms out here that, um, you know, that are inspiring to us. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks moms. Um, I myself am a mom. I am a mom to 55 plants. Um, so my plants better thank me. <laughs> Um, but yes, I'm, I'm, I joke, but yeah, um, we can, you know, we can take, um, I think like a lot of us can relate to what Brit says, uh, what Brit says, like where we have moms out here are really amazing and they do a lot of things that make us think like, wait, what, how are you able to do that? You know, while you're also doing this, you know, so appreciate moms all the way, uh, parents in general and uh, Micronesians being hospitable, um, so true. Um, there is a, a report or there's a book uh, about how um, foreigners, no, it was not a book. It was, it's part of a book. Um, so actually, no, there's a book written by a German man on how um, Chuk was one of the most like avoided um, destinations during uh, the colonizer period, right? I mean, we're still colonized right now, but during that time when Europe started colonizing our um, island. So there's this book by this German man who said that, oh, avoid Chuk at all costs because they are so savage and they are so un unhospitable. Like, just don't go there. They will kill you. They don't care if you have a Bible. They don't care if you bring ice cream or money. They will kill you. Like, they are the most unhospitable hospitable people on this planet and guess what one of them decided to go there anyway and he received the best hospitality in all the land because Chukis are also like Micronesians are so hospitable and Chukis are kind of known for their hospitality to um you know if you go there uh but yeah and then there is a counter report by a Chukis girl who is um doing her PhD in Australia. And basically what she did was she just countered the whole thing, the whole book that the German man wrote. And he, she said, why did you say this when all this and this and this and all this and this and this? And it made my whole year last year when I read it because I was like, thank you, thank you, finally somebody. Um, but yeah, um, I will, uh, sh I'll look for the reports that I read in the book and I will share it in the, I'll share it like some somewhere on the page in the near future. 
if you guys are interested to read it but if those are like some of the things that i read and i'm just like what what why did this foreigner said this and then now this this actual micronesian person comes and just counter everything with like facts and yeah my whole life was made with that um but sorry i digress but we can move into uh more of uh the activity bridge sorry no worries um let me try to spotlight myself all right Um, so basically, um, if anyone wants to, uh, maybe we can go around and ask any of these questions. Or how about I ask Mamie and Nels first? <laughs> and so basically, or let me refresh my memory. Did you already answer the question, Mamie? <laughs> I think you're muted. May, I think you're on mute. Oh, there I am. Sorry. I really went on with like two sentences with being on mute. But anyway, um, so I'm not going to take up too much space, um, you know, because I've, I'm speaking a lot tonight. But um, at this moment, currently, one woman that inspires me is uh, Nicole or Nikki Yamase. She just recently went down in the Mariana Trench. She's like one of the only women that ever gone down there. And she's Micronesian. She's the first Pacific Islander to go down there, you know, and she's a scientist. So to me, that's my inspiration right now. Um, and what does Women's History Month mean? Um, first of all, I did not even know about Women's History, International Women's Day and Women's History Month until I became, until well into my late 20s. Um, and basically, I love Women's History Month and Women's International Women's Day because it, it represents us, the working class women, and uh, us women who are always fighting for a cause. So yeah, that's why I love it. Um, so I'm going to pass it on because I want other people to speak. All right. Thank you. And so let me go ahead and ask Nels. So, and then afterwards we can have everybody, um, whoever wants to speak on it. And so the first question was, what is your definition of woman empowerment? Okay, so I think, not on some cocky shit or anything, excuse me, if you have kids around. But to be real, I think the definition of woman empowerment, you have it here. I'm looking at, I, I think that when you look at your own growth as a woman, you're like, oh yeah, even if it's small, that's still woman empowerment. Like you, all of you ladies here, that's woman empowerment. I think that simply existing, like for example, for me, I'm still young. So like even with little growth, if I see that or I see that from somebody else who I'm close with, I'm like, oh my God, I love that. It fuels me, you know? So I, for me, I view it as woman empowerment. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of the women in my life, I'm just like, dang, like this is, all of this is woman empowerment for me. And I think that it's important sometimes as Micronesians, especially Micronesian women, like we're so humble, right? So we don't take that time to give credit to ourselves. So woman empowerment is what you're doing. Woman empowerment is what I'm doing. And woman empowerment is why we're all here, right? And even if you're not Micronesian, that's, and you're a woman simply existing, that's woman empowerment. That's awesome. And so I completely agree. Um, our people are super humble. They tend to forget about themselves. Oh, well, speaking for myself, sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. And so, you know, just being a woman, heck, even being a human yourself, you know, you're powerful already. <laughs> and so basically tying into the next question, who is your strongest female inspiration and why? Um, I guess you're welcome, May. Did you guys read the chat box? 
if you don't know already, we're all, we're sisters. <laughs> um, who is my strongest? Um, like a lot of us, I think I will also have to say my mom, but because you've already mentioned moms, I would have to say uh, one of my favorite authors. Um, I know a lot of powerful women, so it is, it's not fair to, you know, just mention one, but I think um, in honor of her legacy, if you all know poetry, if y'all read her books, um, Miss Maya Angelou, love her with all my heart. Her words, it, what's that song? Um, killing me softly with his words. She's killing me softly with her words because even her, like her history or her growth, it's just like, wow. She, she's one of my strong um, women inspiration. So yeah, Maya Angelou. Awesome. Yeah, I've heard from her before. I was like binge reading. Binge reading is a thing. Um, I think she has an Instagram, right? Where she puts her poetry out there. Awesome. All right. And so the last question is, um, what are ways that you want to see us Micronesian women rising up together to become trailblazers for our community? Um, this is an interesting one because we're island women. I, I can speak for myself. I'm a village girl existing in the city, right? Like I'm not a city girl. I just have that mentality, <laughs> you know, but I am a village girl existing in the city. So I would have to say with this whole like twist of, you know, us descending from these really cool, powerful ancestors and now walking into the modern world on concrete and you know, working in these tall buildings, wherever you work, whatever you do, right? Um, I think a lot of it would be like sharing knowledge. So I can include a quote where I heard this before and it just transitioned me back to like, this is what I wanna see with the women in our community or with people from our community, especially the Chiquis community, right? Um, and it's, um, you do knowledge, you, I think it's, you do knowledge, you don't do knowledge justice when you keep it to yourself, right? Or when you think you're better than everyone else. And I was like, dang, like, that's what I want to see. That's what we need more of, um, which is, I would want us to continue sharing knowledge or, and it doesn't even have to be on some deep shit. You know what I mean? Like, if you know how to bake bread, like teach a sister how to do that. Or if you know how to like grow plants, like teach a sister how to do that. Like that's, for me, that's rising up and being trailblazers for the younger generation, but also the older generation, right? Because we have this saying from my dad's island or from Chuk is Fairo de Fairo de, right? Which means respect down, but respect up as well. Like for me, I can't think that I'm better than it, anyone. So the older one has to teach me, like has some stuff to teach me and the younger one has stuff to teach me. So I think being, rising up and being a trailblazer for our community is sharing knowledge. I would wanna see more of that from our ladies and our gentlemen. So I think that's, that's what I wanna see. Yes, thank you, Nels. Mamie can teach us how to bake, <laughs> as she said in the, the chat room. <laughs> so that's definitely a goal. Um, I I agree with that because um, honestly, I agree with any, everything <laughs> already. <laughs> and so, um, cause I know a lot of us in our community, I think this is just a thing in general is that some people are kind of hesitant to not really tell the people that are older than what to do, but just, you know, giving them some knowledge. Sometimes it's, you know, the other way around. Sometimes the people who are older than us, they won't take us seriously. It might be a credibility thing, or maybe it's their first impression of us. It, it's not where they want, us, want it to be, to the point where they're accepting to take knowledge from us, you know? And so I think tying in with that is that we just need to learn to 
become more open to gaining knowledge from all different age groups. And so, yeah, I really like how you brought that up. And if anybody wants to, or so thank you Nels, um, if anybody wants to go ahead and say anything about these questions, I guess we can talk about the first one, which is woman empowerment. I know I, I won't be calling on anybody. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> um, so whoever wants to go first, you can talk about that, what your definition of woman empowerment is. Um, can I just say something? Um, just for time's sake and for organizational purposes, I'm a listening person. So <laughs> if you um, if you're if you want to go next, just say it in the chat so we can move on to the next person, uh, because we do have another story uh, after this uh, activity. And also, uh, if you don't want to answer all the questions, if you want to answer, if you want to highlight one that you love, feel free to do so or feel free to answer all of them. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to jump in so we can, um, yeah, get the conversation going. If that makes sense, sorry. Can I, can I say something? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a woman, obviously. <laughs> um, but in terms of woman empowerment, uh, I grew up, in a very, very, how do I say? I basically grew up around women. And what I mean by this is like when I was younger, my dad would you know, go to work and I would be at home with my mom, her cousins, my aunties, all my other cousins. And it's just like a female presence. I grew up with a very strong female presence in my life. So much so that uh, when, I was a, when I was growing up and learning Chukis, I would speak it like a girl. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Like some of the, you know, exaggerations that they use, the way they uh, use their words, that's how I would speak. So when I would speak to my, my guy friends, it, it would come off like really weird. But not to say that's bad or anything. Like I said, I grew up with a very strong female presence in my life and not just a strong female presence, like a strong independent female presence. All my sisters, I know the brother's supposed to be the ones looking out for the sisters, but my sisters can handle themselves. That's that's for sure. My aunties, they're always on top of everything. They can be suffering from, they can go into their own struggles, their own personal struggles, but they take care of everybody, the whole family. So you know, in terms of women empowerment, uh, I see it as not just empowering other women, but, you know, they also inspire other people, everyone, you know, our moms are not just our moms, they're like our central figure. Of course, our fathers are that too, but like the focus is on women and, you know, it's not to say that just, I'm just saying like women are inspirational, you know, Maya Angelou, phenomenal woman, women are phenomenal, powerful. You learn from everybody's experiences. And, you know, I hope to, you know, someday break down this whole patriarchy where it's everything has to go through men. And especially in government, there's always like men up there and it's always the elder men who has to say everything, which is, it's not true. We have to be more pro progressive. So women empowerment is everywhere. Thank you. Um, thank you, Maymay, for, for acknowledging my, my hand raising. Um, thank you also, uh, Tiro, to everyone in this, in this, um, in this box or this space, this virtual space. Um, thank you for this opportunity to share and to listen and learn from what everyone. Um, uh, when I saw the, uh, the post, I just thought it was, um, just timely because it is women's, it was recently Women International Day of Women or Women's Day and then it's, it's Women's Month. And I just was so um, compelled to participate and hopefully also 
um, build relationship with other people here in the group uh, in other programs or other sessions. Um, I love the questions that you guys posed and, and shared. I, it really made me think about also myself or the women around me. Uh, and so as far as your first question, like what does it mean to me? Um, I think being a Micronesian or being a Chukis means women empowerment because we come from a matrilineal society. Our society, at least in Chuk, is through your, 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 your mother, right? So you earn your clan membership and your land and your name through your mother. And that's the way it's passed uh, over generations. So just knowing that our, our society is matrilineal means that our society really put a focus uh, and, and uh, importance on women. Um, and so taking care of the women meant taking care of the land and taking care of the people. And I think uh, just like you mentioned, um, May May of uh, Maijolin Kim, who wrote that, you know, who's doing her dissertation on, um, you know, rewriting uh, Chuk's history uh, from a from a, a indigenous perspective, which is something that we need to keep finding back. We need to keep going back to because we we've always had our voices, but you know, we were an oral speaking society. So it was never really written. So we're kind of competing against written histories and written perspectives. So I think it's great that as part of the migration pattern of our people out, out East to the States, we're get, you know, we're, we go to school and we're able to learn the language that we can then write and then write, write about ourselves, become the next Maya Angelou um, the person I wanted to share as my inspiration, uh, you're right, we, we always come back to our moms, right, because they, they're the source of life, <laughs> obviously, but also they, they share so much of themselves for our betterment. Um, but I'm going to kind of go another direction and, and pick another, uh, a good uh, a Micronesian scholar and poet who really helped me kind of reflect on myself and the people around me and where I live. And that's um, Emily Cherkiling, who, who writes about indigenous perspectives and uh, indigenous issues uh, and why it's important to, to find your voice and to find spaces to share them. Um, and so that's what I really appreciate about this group here, uh, Micronesian Dialogue. And then also um, at the, with your third question, um, you know, how can we be trailblazers, right, or, or help one another rise above to become trailblazers. It's really hard. Oh, yes. She's, yeah, definitely my top inspiration. Um, I was lucky to have her as my intro to English uh, literature in uh, at, at University of Guam. That's where I'm at in Guam. So that's where I met her. And, um, you know, she was, she's always on the lookout to, um, to call, uh, nurture the next group of Micronesian writers and poets and just in general. So she's really lovely um, to, 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 to learn from. Um, and so what I was gonna, sh what I do wanna, uh, wanna recognize also is the challenges that we have as being Micronesian women in a patriarchy, in a patriarch society like Guam, or Guam because it's colonized by the America or they're in the US, right? Um, so there's all these challenges that we face and, and while we are resisting to some of the, the patriarchal ideals and, and perspectives and worldviews, because we've survived for so long, we find ways to be creative and be able to exist as a, as a Chukis or as a Micronesian. Um, and that in itself is an example of how just being who we are is a way to, to um, you know, be, be trailblazers. We, you know, we've we because colonization also means getting rid of people. We we're, we exist to the to this day, so we're we're powerful people, uh, obviously. Um, but I do want to uh, acknowledge that we continue to have challenges, whether it's trying to express who we are or express the, our cultures. Um, sometimes the environment that we live in doesn't is not conducive to that. And, and then so it's it's important to have spaces like these where we can talk about what things that ex what are the issues that exist so that we can figure out um, collectively how to how to address those issues right and then also what do we need to learn from our older generations and what can our and also acknowledge what the younger generation can contribute to in that in in, in the way that we want to address issues. Um, a very, an example that just happened last night is you know, being a mom as well of young children. Um, 
you know, you're always battling um, being a mom, but also, you know, um, you know, there's the social, the personal and the professional world that you have to almost navigate. And so um, last night was a very hard example of being a mom because, um, you know, there was an opportunity to actually meet Nicole Yamase, who was, she, she, you know, she was docked in Guam to go to the Mariana Trench. Uh, so she was on island and we were supposed to meet her at her hotel before she left to Hawaii today. And I was planning to go, but because I had no support system to um, to get get my kids to go, you know, stay with while I go meet this awesome one, awesome Micronesian woman. It reminded me of the struggles that we continue to have, um, and it only existed because my support system. My mom had to go travel to the states to stay with my other sister at the at this time. So it just it it made me miss my mom because usually when she's here, I just like okay, I'm gonna go do this thing for work or I'm gonna do this. Um, but it reminded me that there's still these challenges that exist, and we need to find ways to um, address them accordingly, appropriately. Um, very uh, culturally relevant also in the way that we address these issues. And um, yeah, sorry to take saying a lot, but I just I just love all the questions you guys pose and it really, um, just like what Maya Angelou's writings uh, does and uh, as well as Emily's is, you know, makes us really reflect and find the ways that we can see ourselves and how do we also better, um, you know, uh, what we're envisioning ourselves to what we want to be and how can we get make that possible. So thank you guys for making this um, a really interesting session. Wow, awesome. Thank you so much, Nadine. Or how do you say your name? Can you just unmute and tell me your name real quick? Oh, yeah, so it's even my American patriarchal name, Nadine, but in Chukis, it's Nadine. But yeah, Nadine, Nadine is good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think you came in late, so you didn't do the introduction, but yeah, so we're so happy to have you here. Um, I'm another job, uh, another job that I do professionally is I'm a professional stalker online. So because I'm connected to Emily, I, <laughs> I sort of peek through your Facebook and the things <laughs> that you do. And so I'm like a fan of yours, if you didn't know that. Um, but yes, I, I'm so embarrassed to admit that. Uh, but yes, guys, um, Emily, thank you. I mean, Nadine, thank you for sharing about Emily. Um, I'm hoping that she will be in one of these spaces soon when her schedule allows. Um, I got in touch with her, but you know, she's very busy. She's like a curator in Europe right now. So we have to like let her, we have to work on her time. Uh, but yes, I'm, I'm so happy that to have you uh, share all that Nadine, I, it's so inspiring to me. And the fact that you just mentioned you like, you know, putting things on pause and trying to rush to go meet Nicole. I can relate to that because that would be me, even though I've met Nicole because I went to high school with her. Now yeah. is a different because she went to the market. She like, She's a celebrity now. <laughs> Um, so I can relate to that, you know, and then having our moms as like our support system. It's very relatable. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm so happy and I'm so honored that you're even in this space. Like who thought that you would be here too, right? Um, <laughs> oh, too kind. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. Yes. If you, uh, if you, I know that some of you guys, uh, put in your Instagram handle, um, Deshaun just said, follow me on the, on Instagram. I will follow you. Um, but I have all of you guys' Instagram. We'll go through that. But if you want to leave your Instagram there too, go ahead, feel free. Um, but I don't see any raised hands uh, after Nadine. Does anybody want to go or should we move into the next story? Can I go? Yes, for sure. Sorry. Um, very quickly, I really have nothing to offer. I'm just here to take in and listen. And because I suspect that I'll be seeing you guys over the next several months at these things, I'm really just here to learn. And you may not know I am not Chiquis and I, or I've never been there, or I just discovered what Micronesia was not many years ago. You know, like I'm very new, uh, but I, have adopted two um, Chickie's daughters. And so now it's my responsibility to know everything. So <laughs> that's why I am, I am everywhere on everything Micronesian, um, specifically Chickie's, just so 
uh, I can learn and share. And like Nelly said, like the, you need to share it because how else am I going to get your traditions and yeah. information and uh, lineage info, tribe info, clan info, what you eat, like to them, you know, how, how else will they ever know they'll be just raised by our, our own values and our own culture and not know um, their own culture. So yes, a big responsibility is on me to make it happen. But I, I also have difficulty finding um, information from the source. It's, it's a lot of foreign blogs. And so it's like, yeah, what, what do I believe? But um, yes, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. And I always learn so much from you ladies and I'm just here to listen but thank you so just so you know uh, my perspective where I'm coming from I'm just going to be here to listen and learn and um yes that's it <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you Sonia um she's trying to downplay herself Sonia is one of the most compassionate human beings that I've ever encountered in my life um I have not met her in real life but I've I met like I've gotten to know her online over the last couple of years and she's just one of the most compassionate human being this is gonna make me cry because you really are compassionate um she's so compassionate and she has a pure heart of gold and her Chugi's daughters are so beautiful and I'm happy that you're constantly trying to educate your Chuki's daughters um, that you've adopted uh, their their culture, you know, like not a lot of people do this, like they adopted somebody and then they teach them something else. But the fact that you're doing that is just so amazing. So I am glad you're here um, because you're here for the girls and I we're so happy to have you. Sorry, one more thing. And it's not just educating my my girls, it's educating my community because uh, someone I think Brittany had spoken before about just the massive um, discrimination that Chickies or Micronesians in general face here so it, it's really is about educating people around me um, or saying goodbye to people around me that need to be said goodbye to or challenging them on social media or you know I don't do Facebook anymore because that drives me nuts but yeah so yeah, it's it, it goes beyond that. Thank you, Sonia. Um, do I, I don't, does anybody want to go? I don't see any raised hands um, or like anything in the chat box. Um, we can always come back to these questions if you want. Uh, but I want to uh, open up the space to uh, hear about this travel story that Nellen had um, encountering Pacifica woman on her travels. It's one of the most inspiring stories that I've ever heard. Um, so I'm giving her the space now to share that story. Thank you all for sharing. Um, uh, okay, so um, you can answer those questions even after this story, or even in the chat box. I really appreciate um, everybody's perspective. And I think what better way to wrap up or like to dive into this story um, than to talk about women empowerment and all that good stuff. Um, because this story happened to, I wanna say three years ago. So I'm a traveler, a young traveler. You know, she's a broke college student or whatever, but she tries here and there. <laughs> um, so in my freshman year of college, I went to India to travel um, for three months. And I know for coming from a Chiki's household, it's like, what, India? Like, what's going on? All this, you know, but mom is cool. And it was a lot of dialogue, you know, conversations. <laughs> like, I'll be safe. I'll be good. Um, so trust me. It's easier said than done, but it happened. Um, anyway, so here I am in India. It was like about three months in to my travels and I'm going into this desert in um, Rajasthan, which is this big, there's the blue city and there's the pink city. So it's this like big state, let's just say, right, in India. And in this desert, there's this college, it's called Barefoot College and it's for women who are aspiring engineers, aspiring mechanics, you know, all these different cool stuff that um, they welcome women from all backgrounds, especially um, women who don't have the opportunity in their home country. 
So I'm, I woke up th that day, like so homesick and I'm not usually the type to like miss the States when I'm away, like, you know, yeah, that's just the way I, I I'm just like, okay, forget America. Like <laughs> I'm traveling, I'm doing my thing. <laughs> and, um, I just want to go, you know, like explore the place. But on that particular day, I was so homesick. I was like, oh my gosh, like it's been so long since I've heard Chukis. Like I have this thing where, you know, I, every now and then I have to hear like the local Chukis songs. If you're Chukis, you know, Bintong and Suraisi and all that, just to feel my soul, you know, because it's been a minute since I've been away from home. So I'm like so homesick on this bus ride. And I, I was like, yo, like, where in the desert am I going to like listen to Portuguese music or even, you know, have conversation? And like Deshaun, like me, I was really surrounded by all these white kids, right? In fact, that was the only scholarship and brown person on this trip. So I was like, dang, like this is, it has come down to this. I got to talk to myself, you know, like talk to myself in Portuguese if I have to. <laughs> um, so three hours later, I arrived to this Barefoot College and I'm taking the whole tour of this really cool place. And as soon as I go towards like the end of the school, the university, let's just say, um, there was this big room filled with really beautiful women who were working to put together, um, put back together this like um, machine, like a walkie talkie or something, right? So that was their, um, their like class session. So I walk in and in the doorway, it's like this big white doors that kind of looks like a ut, which is like the house for gathering in Chuk. Um, I go in and I see two ladies who are sitting there with two gold teeth. And I'm like, wait, hold on. They're not only like in the desert, they're really dripped out in the desert. Like they're really looking fly out here. They're throwing up the shaka from far away. Like they're doing this to me as I'm walking in. And I'm like, hold on. Like, I'm seeing things just because I'm so homesick, I'm seeing things. But I walk in closer and I'm like, wait, are those gold tooth that I see? And I just see these two Tongan, these two beautiful Tongan ladies and they're like, la, 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 la. you know, like they're really like greeting me and they're walking towards me to hug me. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, I was like holding, I'm like this. I'm like, I was about to cry. Everybody in the group knows I'm not that emotional. Like I'm not, I don't cry here and there, you know? Like some of my, you know, team members, when they saw elephants, they started crying. Like, that's cool too, if that, that makes you emotional. But for me, I was just like, um, okay, like that's a cute elephant or whatever. Like, <laughs> but when I saw those two ladies, it was like waterworks. I was crying. I was like, oh my God, like God, you best answered my prayers. Like, you know, showed me uh, my, like people from my Oceania, and what I've been, you know, asking to see on this travel. It's not just the fact that I've seen them in the desert, but it was just like, yo, like you really are here, you know, to show me that we do belong in spaces that we, you know, we don't even dream of being in. We're in different spaces that, you know, we're either the first of our kind or we're just like, it's, you know, who who's into engineering, right? That I know, I don't know anyone that is Chukis or that's um, Pacifica. So when I saw, the, I saw those two ladies and them just being so warm and, you know, welcoming, I was, I was crying. And then they were like talking to me and asking like, you know, what are you doing here? Like, who are you? Where, where are you from? And I'm like, they thought I was Samoan at first. And I'm like, no, I'm not Samoan. I'm Micronesian. I'm from Chuk. And as soon as they heard Micronesia come out of my mouth, they started screaming Micronesia. And I thought that it was out of excitement. So I was screaming along with them like, yeah, yeah, like Micronesia, like that's what's up. And they're like, no, 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 no. There's a Micronesian woman here too. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, please let this woman be Chiquis because listen, the moment I, I, I turned around and I saw her, like she, she was wearing a scarf too. So I'm like, okay, what are they calling it? And they're like, Micronesia, Micronesia. And I was, I turned around and the lady who's from Chuk turned around too. And we looked at, we, we made eye contact and she was like, oh my God, are you Chiquis? I'm like, yes, we ran to each other. Everybody thought we were like sisters or something, <laughs> like long lost sisters. But I'm like, oh my God, it's so good to see you like in the middle of the desert. Like, what are you doing here? And she was like, she was, we both embraced each other. Like we've known each other for like a million years. And their, their professor was like, oh my gosh, we have a lady here from Chuk too. And 
you know, they they were kind enough to give us space to talk and you want it? Oh, maybe you're on no. mute. I mean, <laughs> and you're still in mute. <laughs> oh, there you go. Sorry. No, no, you get it. Just don't want you to spill the tea, but <clears throat> without knowing. <laughs> um Anyway, so the lady, we both sat down and for uh, privacy reasons, I'm not going to mention her name, but I will mention the, the island that she's from. She's from India. And we both sat down and we're like crying. We're like holding hands, crying to each other. Like, oh my God, like, you know, what brings you here? All this cool stuff. And she's like, you know, I came here to a church and they saw that I was really good at doing like, um, uh, like repairing the machines and different things like that. So they're like, okay here's an opportunity for you to go and learn for six months. For me, like hearing those stories, hearing that opportunity, like that's an open door, right? For me, I was like, yo, like that's so cool that you're doing this far away from home, you know, meeting new people, even though it is hard, you get, you do get homesick and you want to go home and you want to swim because this was in the middle of the desert. And, oh, and then, Not at that, at that, yeah. Um, so she was, I was just like, this is, this just brings me like hope. You know what I mean? Like her seeing me there, you know, that's her own story to tell. But me seeing her there was like, dang, this was my sign. Like I do belong in this, in this group of all white kids and this group of all rich kids who didn't come on this travel journey with me through scholarship. Like I just felt so Sometimes I do feel out of place, but I'm like, I have to own the space that I'm in just like that this lady has. And just like the Tongan ladies have. Even if I don't have Kipa or Gotu, I'm still going to smile <laughs> like those two ladies. But even just seeing them there and seeing Pacifica women in the desert in this college for women. And I'm just like, dang, like we can be anywhere. We can own all the, the space that we take up. And wherever you're at, you do need to be in that space, I think. And for me, that was um, that was my sign of like, that was my good luck sign. Um, if you've read The Alchemist, the book, that was my good omen. And to continue the journey of my travels, because after that, it was another extra month that I had to like complete all of North India um, for my semester. So just seeing her there was like, was beautiful. And I think that, sometimes as women young or old or whatever you want to classify yourself as we shy away because we feel like we don't take we don't belong in the spaces but I, I hope that this story of me meeting those three beautiful ladies just like reassures you that you can take up the space that you you take up even if that means in the desert of India wherever you are in your room now that we're doing a lot of virtual stuff take up that space and I hope that you enjoyed the story. If you have any questions, just ask. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. That's one of the coolest stories that I've ever heard in my life. And I I hear I already heard it. I will sit through it again and hear it again and again and again. Um, Nels has told the story to like a lot of our family members. And my uncles, they cry because it's like in, in India, you run into a Chukis woman in India. It's like, what? I mean, it's common to run into a classmate, you know, someone like, you know, from the United States, but to run into your, your, your people in India, that's just, it's like, wait, what? And like, you know, we have to go back. Now we're going back to the hospitality topic um, we they did not know each other, but the 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 interaction with each other, even with the Tongan ladies, it's like they have known each other for it's like they know each other because that's that's Pacifica right there. That is the Pacific hospitality right there. And it's just that's why I love that story. It's one of my favorite stories of all time. Um, yeah, thanks Nels for sharing. You're welcome. I just want to say that going back to this, um, the Zoom meeting that we have, the title, Breaking Barriers, that was breaking the barrier, right? For her, for me, for hopefully all of us here, just hearing that, and for those two Tongan ladies, like, that that's us breaking barriers. So break your barrier, you know what I mean? Like, just break it. 
it's 2021. <laughs> Nels, are you open for questions or comments on your story? I'm open to anything um, regarding that story. Go ahead and ask, ask, make a comment, ask if I cried ugly. I'll tell you the truth, honestly. You guys better knock yourself out because I hate to be the bad news bearer, but we only have four minutes left on our time. Can I just... ask a question? Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. You... You can go ahead. <laughs> Men first. <laughs> this is the table, the food table. Go well, first. Because <laughs> you have a question. I don't, I, I don't have a question. So go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh OK. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, actually, part of my uh, work here, I work at a, non a nonprofit organization. And a project that I've been doing in person and now online because of uh, the pandemic is kind of understanding what barriers are, that exist, especially for Micronesians. And sometimes how even in the communities we live in, um, amongst our, our Micronesian communities, there could still be barriers that, you know, existed before, you know, moving to a place or that was made be as a result of moving to a place, you know? So, um, so I've, been, I've been having these community conversations about uh, what it means to be uh, what is what is race and social justice in 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 the Pacific, and I feel like those are some of the barriers that maybe you kind of alluded to as part of why you know you you know the need to break barriers. Um, so I guess my first question is: Is your when you meet other Micronesians or Chukis in the states, like kind of comparing to how you met uh, that woman in India? Do you find a did you is there a difference in the way you kind of gravitate towards my other Micronesians or other Chukis? Is it different from the way you were you responded to this woman because you were in a very foreign place? I love and appreciate that question. Um, if you know me in real life, you know how I interact the same with the same vibe, with the same love. Um, I for me, even though I've lived here for mad long, like I still feel so like excited when I see somebody else. I would say that I was overly like emotional when I met and interacted with that lady just because that was like a few weeks into my travel and it was in the desert. So all of that was like, you know, it was an overwhelming experience, but the way that I embrace the chukis that I've met here in places, in spaces that I take up. And a lot of those spaces, you know, there's not a lot of chukis or there's not a lot of Pacifica people. So I still am like excited. Like I still, I could cry if I went somewhere and then I see them too, you know what I mean? So I, it's still the same, it's still the same, I think. But if you know, I, if you know me in real life, you, I think you definitely see that. Sorry if I creep you out, but just, <laughs> no. I miss you even before you know. Yeah, I feel like I could tell, I mean, I don't know you, but I'd like to know you some more. And I, I get that vibe already here on the virtual call. Um, but it also speaks to, like you guys keep saying hospitality, which is very embedded in who we are. It's, our, it's in our cultural values to make people feel at home. You know, we're so, we really, um, that's so ingrained in our, in our society. Like I've heard of I've heard of people like even when we do a, a, a adoption. What I've heard in, in Chuk adoption, the the person that comes in tends to kind of have a is like a, have a higher position because of the way they place respecting the person that you know is joining your family. So I, I get that vibe, and I really appreciate you answering my crazy question. But that's something that I've been exploring with other Micronesians, uh, uh, unfortunately. And I don't know if you guys have this problem in your respective state. Do you find it harder to get other Micronesians to come together and talk about issues? Is it or <clears throat> is it easier in the states? Because I have a diff I see it differently here in Guam. So I'm curious as to how it is, how everyone else here kind of 
have your spaces of discussion and reflection um, as about being Micronesian. Would, anyone else can answer that, sorry. Sorry, I know, oh, we're on time, sorry. <laughs> sorry no, for coming on no. late. I hope the Zoom doesn't stop because this is actually a good space to open that up. That's this. That's why for me, like, first of all, I would love for you to get to know me more and vice versa. And if anyone else, um, I feel like that's a really interesting topic because if I were to meet that lady in Chu, it wouldn't be as dramatic as it was, right? And talking about, or even the whole shouting of Micronesia in the room, it won't, it wouldn't be as special if, it, if I was just in Micronesia, right? Um, so a lot of these things, a lot of these, we're breaking barriers in a lot of these spaces because we're almost kind of, you know, the minority within the minority within the minority type. So that's why it's so like big and special to us. Um, in the states, in the state that I live at, along with a lot, a lot of people on the Zoom, it's easier, but it's it has its challenges, but it's easier. But I think the main challenge that we all, you know, experience is knowing how to, and not hold it down, but like recognize that we need to be empowered by, you know, the communities that we come from, understanding that first. Because it's not like when you're out here, you know, in the States, like, yeah, you're Micronesian, get on with whatever you got to do, right? But it, that's the challenge of getting us together and like talk about Micronesian issues and embrace each other as Micronesians is the hardest part is just recognizing that and then moving on to host hosting that space or even just talking about it in real life. But to finally have a group that recognize that yo, we're Micronesians, we're Chukis, you know, we should stand in these spaces that we, you know, take up, we should be proud of it. It's over. Sorry, respectfully, it's over for these hoes. Period. If we know how powerful we are and the spaces that we take up and we belong there, like it's a wrap. I just want to point out something. Um, I know I mentioned the time. I'm like the bad news bearer here, but we're not going to cut off the Zoom. We're going to keep it going. But if you do have to go, um, you know, just you can quietly go. I will say bye in the chat, but we're not going to turn it off because this is like a really it's like we're just starting to open up the can now, but yeah, we're not gonna close it. We're gonna continue. Um, we're gonna con continue dialoguing with each other, but we do respect those that um, need to go. Um, so yeah, and I really like the question. I'm going to highlight that question so I can bring it back in the next dialogue, just in case you guys, you know, di in in case in case we like divert from. The question here but it's really important and i feel like it's one of the focal point of this dialogue anyway so we'll bring it back again next time but we're we can still talk about it now just i am i making sense uh sorry yeah also i don't want to go uh discredit the fact that dr you had a question before or you had something to say oh no i was just gonna talk about like your story was very heartwarming i mean uh in high school, I went to high school in Juke, and I, the whole senior year, junior year, I was like, man, I can't wait to go out to the States for college. I'm going to pick the college that's like as far away as possible from my family. We're all, they're all like in Hawaii, Guam, Washington, and I, I'm going to school in New Jersey, and there is no, there are, there are no Pacifica people anywhere. Like the closest you get are Filipinos. And uh, I kind of look Filipino, so they kind of bring me into that that area. And I I relate so much. There, it's it was hard. I thought the first semester was hard. It it was nothing. I I got so homesick. I started like doubting myself. Like, why did I even come here? Like, I should have just gone somewhere where it was easier. And it started to take a toll on my on my studies, but. And like, yeah, I would just blast uh, music from back home, you know, Pinto, Suraita, even some of the, the new ones that come out. And, you know, I, I would get so sad, but, you know, one, one night I was, I couldn't do work and I just decided to, yeah, Faith Slave, Asi Ray, my boy, AS. Um, and I just 
one a thought came to mind and it I was like thinking you know what I am just like my ancestors you know we are voyages all these people that we all we go out here but instead of navigating the stars we still navigate through you know the oceans of change and you know times are changing and the one thing that really brought me back is when my two roommates were from the Bronx uh I put them on some spam and rice and they were they were blown away so yeah I just want to say I relate so much to your story and you know it's such a heartwarming story and also uh Nadine you were talking about like organizing I think I mean I followed the conversation but I I just want to point out like you know I I tried to I tried to get my age group interested in what's going on back home or you know anything related to you know how the islands are and sometimes it can be a little challenging because with my age group we're all like college age we all just want to go out and party you know don't want to focus on school politics is just out of the question so yeah there there can be these challenges but we got to just keep on going because you know I like to think that we are the first wave of change. So we got to keep, you know, our generation is going to be the ones that is going to lead our people into the coming world. So thank you. Beautifully said. And I'm really sorry to keep taking up. And it seems like I, I feel such a, an outsider in this group because I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I've never lived in the States. I just visited a while ago, but I thank you for, for allowing me to speak. And I, unfortunately, I do have to go. I wish I could stay on and listen, um, but it's very true, the challenges and, and um, what I, this particular project that I'm doing really tries to uh, highlight Micronesian voices. And it, it tends to be um, one particular group that's always on and it's the indigenous people of Guam, which, you know, there's also considered um, politically, they're not considered mic Micronesian, but it's a, it's an interesting word here in Guam. Um, but if I could get anyone's interest today um, to participate in this conversation about what is Micronesia, I'd like to know so I can send you the Zoom invite it, it, I don't have any Micronesian, I do have Micronesian representation, but there, <laughs> I'd like to get new people on because uh, it's always the same people. And so this is part of the reason why I wanted to come on and possibly see if others in the States can um, speak to the issues of what it means to be Micronesian in this, in this contemporary time. So I really uh, thank you and I'm so sorry. I'll just share my, um, email here if it's okay. And then if anyone is available, unfortunately it's Guam time for now. Um, but just if you're free, I hope you can um, consider joining the session. And I think my group, the existing group can really learn from you guys as well. But and I hope to see you guys next week. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Thank you so much, Nadine. So, so. Thank you. I actually have something to say, um, Brittany. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, I wanted to, I really wanted to say thank you to DR for attending this, um, you know, this Zoom session tonight. I really um, appreciate you, what you shared tonight. It's um, to me, just seeing seeing a male here, a guy, and I'm thinking about all my brothers out here in the state in Oregon, and I'm like, this would be one of them, you know, just to sit here and listening to this session and sharing. It's very very empowering, you know. Um, I have a question for you, Nels. You know, like as a young um, student, Micronesian traveling. What would be your, your advice? I know you were talking about breaking barriers, but what would be your advice for, for Micronesian students who are new in the States coming out here? Breaking barriers, yes, you were talking about that, but any other advice that you would give to 
our students or our youngsters coming out here to the States. Thank you, Mel. That's very, you know, valid. Because I did say I am a village girl. I did come from Chuuk. Um, and I did, it was a hard time navigating this the school system and everything else. I think in a way, some, in my life, like it always transitions back to my own identity, right? The, the, you know, the who question of like, who you, who am I or who are you, right? For me, navigating my advice, navigating, you know, first coming out here, school, whatever that you do, is that who you are, knowing who you are, and knowing what you bring to the table or can bring will actually help elevate you, right? And this can go beyond, you know, college for me and traveling because actually I, I use college to navigate and travel. And you don't have to, you, ha you can break barriers, but you don't have to break a bank to travel, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I speak with a hella slang. So I'm just throwing all that I think that, you know, could really help the young or, you know, the old college student, like whoever you are. And you don't even have to be a college student to take this advice, but knowing who you are, it's like, you can actually, you know, in this world of capitalism, you can capitalize off of that. So knowing who you are, being proud of that will actually elevate you. So that can help you travel, that can give you, you know, because, you know, a lot of these people here actually are, they don't know who you are. They don't know who Chukis are. They don't know who Micronesians are. So you educating them and you taking advantage of any opportunity and knowing who you are and being proud of that, you're welcome in the space that you take up. So I would have to say, keep digging on ex exploring who you are. You will definitely, it's like opening up hella doors for yourself. But you're not just doing that for yourself because we don't, we don't believe in closing doors in Chuki's households, Islander households. Like, so open that door and keep it open for the next person behind you. <laughs> but definitely knowing who you are and understanding that and then capitalize off of that. Thank you, Belps, for asking. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I just I just want to put out there, um, tell them not to be shy, because even me back home, anyone who knows me, I'm like the loudest person in the room, and I'm so energetic, especially back home. I try my best to be involved in everything, but then since coming out to the states, I remember it was, I was so shy because I you know I thought I had it on lock, but I didn't. So just tell them to not be afraid to be who they are. And it can be a little, it can be a really belittling when people don't know where you're from and they don't even, they've never heard of where you're from. And even if you come out with a weird name, speak with a weird accent, um, it can be very belittling, but you just gotta, you got, you have to, it's a must that you channel through that because, you know, people are talking about climate change, but then you come out to the States like more than half of the population don't care, you know? And to us, we're, we're on the front lines. So it's very important that, you know, we stand up for ourselves, our community. Not, we don't even have to be political, but as long as we show, put ourselves on the map, we just gotta show that we are human too. We are a part of this world, you know, be a part of your community, uh, join organizations, there's no uh, Pacifica organization in my school, but I uh, joined uh, this Latino, uh, this Latinx organization, and I'm on the commun uh, communi communications committee. And so I'm just trying to be involved and learn from as much as I can. So my biggest advice is just go out there and be you. You shouldn't care. I know back home, being humble is really is a big quality and that's true be humble but you know there's a difference between being humble and just shying away from the challenge you know if you choose to be a student out here in the states where everyone especially you know 
the ones who are well off, they look down on you. It's very important that no matter what level you're at, you look them straight in the eye and show, tell them that, you know, you're not going to back down because we are warriors, you know, we're voyagers. We, we channel through the biggest struggles that anyone has ever been through. So thank you. Thank you, DR. I have one more question for you. Um, so I wonder because, you know, in the Jukis, in the Jukis culture, not a lot of guys are supporting, empowering women, you know, just within the culture. So I wonder for, for you, I know you were talking about growing up in a, um, in a family where it's very, you're supported by the female figures. So I wonder, like, did you ever have any, like, you know, these are encouragement for you, like your friends or any other friends from just from the Chukis culture or from the community talking to you, like, why are you supporting that uh, women empowering um, thing? Or, you know, why are you like, just the, the mindset that um, I can see here and whatever you're sharing, the words that you share with us tonight, it's just, it's very like, you know, empowering me just listening to it. You know, coming from a family, I have like lots of brothers, I have nine. And just li listening to you, sharing your story about who you are and how you're supported by the women you're in your family. You know, did you get any of those you know, just negative or put down or? Um, I would say uh, for sure there are can be instances where, you know, other people would come at me and be like, why are you, why are you like that? Like, oh, you're so American, you know, especially because to support women, right? And not just support them, but like actually put them, I mean, I wouldn't say I put them on a pedestal, but I do recognize and I acknowledge that, you know, there are people too. So there is an equality to things, right? It's not just because I'm the man that I have to do it. Um, a lot of people come at me and they, they say things like that. Oh, you're so American. I don't, I don't speak with an accent. That's thanks to movies and reading. I, I work so hard to fix it. Um, but I think the point that really, th uh, really turned things around for me because all my life, I've just, I've always been, you know, aware that, you know, women have a presence, like, of course, right? My mom, my mom has a commanding presence. I, everyone listens to their mom, you know? But the point that really turned it around for me was junior year in high school when uh, also on International Women's Day, I entered into uh, an essay contest. And so I, uh, a couple of friends and I, we went to the, the celebration in Chuk. And one of the speakers, they they brought her up. They brought up her name. I'm so I'm so bad at names. Uh, she's the one pursuing her PhD in Australia. She she was talking about uh, what you call it, our matriarchal society. And that made that made me really think. It, it got me interested because so like everywhere you go, you see like you know men are always on top, women are pushed down. But if you really look at our own culture. There always has been that, you know, equality, equity, right? Men go out fishing, they climb the trees, women do the work, and they stay with, like, you know, they, they take care of the kids. Everything goes through the women. So that's when it really, it really hit me that, you know, these values that uh, this, this patriarchal value is not inherently ours. It's the result of the colonizers, right? Like we've been so ingrained into Christianity. That's thanks to the Germans and the Spaniards. What's to say that their values also didn't intertwine with ours? So, I mean, I've always recognized the value of women, you know? So I, I, I support, I support it not only that, like it is what it is. You can't say that women are not important or that they're not talented enough because even if you teach, if you teach a fish to climb a tree, it will never be able to climb a tree because that's not what it's supposed to do, right? A fish is supposed to be in, in the water. So if you give that space 
you amazing things can happen. You know, if you keep telling someone uh, that they're nothing, stereotypes uh, give way to expectations, and there's always going to be a need to fulfill said expectations. So <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent. I'm sorry. Basically, yes, there have been people coming after me for thinking like this, you know. They say progressive is so American, but it's not. When you really look deep into our culture, you actually see and understand, you know, that women do have weight in everything. In fact, they're the ones, why else would they be the only ones that can, you know, pass land? Royal families, right? Chieftains, the royal blood is passed through the women. Why else would that be? They have importance and it's just, years and years, centuries of, you know, colonizing and ignorance that really pushes that, like the best aspects of our culture away. So like I say, we, I always think of me and my generation as the first wave of change. And the, the good thing about that is we get to pick at the good parts of our culture to bring back and we can leave out the bad stuff that we don't need. That is not gonna help anybody. So, you know, that's just my take. And many other people may disagree with me, but I stand strongly with what, what I believe in. Can we get a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you, Dior. Um, Appreciate you. Something I just want to recognize the fact that Deshaun is probably midnight on the East Coast and he's over here talking truth to us so let's just give him a round of applause like I'm just really I appreciate we appreciate you like that thank you so much for being here and those are I you just open up a can of mackerel because these are the things that we're going to be talking about going into the next uh sessions and all that like we're going to be diving into all these and I'm excited, I'm excited that you know Yes, like there's so many ingredients that we're going to be exploring. So this is amazing that, um, you know, these conversations are being jump started. You know what I mean? But yes, Deshaun, we just, we appreciate your presence here. And um, thank you so much for enlightening us with all that. It's really cool to see um, a perspective from um, our, uh, from a male point of view, from our own culture, uh, because I think um, in, in today's society, a lot of um, our own community are adopting so many ways of activism that we're so lost in this, like finding ourselves, finding our culture, activi uh, activism that um, we, don't, we, we don't know where we're going, we don't know what we're fighting for, but it's cool to see other people that are, they have a clear sense of what they're fighting for um so yeah thanks and thank you melba for those really important questions like this is so exciting we're going to talk more about all this in yes yeah, i just uh, cannot thank wait you. thank you so much <laughs> i just want to point i'm i'm actually not on the east coast uh because of covid i'm i'm in washington okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm on the same time period but <laughs> okay. you. you said new jersey so i was like oh my god new jersey yeah, I mean, I, I like, you know, school online and everything, but. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank we you. still appreciate you for being here anyway. Thank you. Regardless so of your location. I, okay. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, uh, if Emily is still here, Em, are you still there? We would love to hear from you. And Verna, we haven't heard you guys say it, said anything. Oh, and Matt, Maddie, Maddie, Verna, and Em. <laughs> don't be shy, but it's also okay if you guys don't want to uh, say anything. Hello. So 
I think I did not even introduce myself, but uh, just shout out to DR. I'm so glad that you're here and sharing your just point of view. Um, I applaud you for that. Thank you. So my name is Madeline Phillip. I'm from uh, Chuuk. I'm from the outer island. Um, I'm from Nama. I work here at Tiger and Tualatin School District, along with uh, Melba, Nelene, and glad to be here. I, like I said, I'm just so glad to be here and thank you, DR. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. We're happy to have you. Um, hi. I, I think I'm the youngest among all of you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in high school and I don't really got much to say. I'm just here to listen to y'all. But thanks for the sharing though. Thank you, Verna. We that you're here, um, and we appreciate that you don't think we're boring for the fact that you're here. It's telling us older, old, it's telling us the older folks that we're not boring. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Hi. So I'm just here basically to learn more about the culture, uh, Micronesian culture. So as for me, as a, I am a mother of three. Um, I don't if you guys can hear my children, they're pretty loud, they're upstairs. Um, I don't, <laughs> there's so many things that I wanna talk about. I just don't know what, what, is, what is the first thing I wanna talk about. But I really love this where um, we're all, women are coming all together to, you know, empowering other women to also be in that where, in that type of word, we want them to be where, how do you say it? Just to be, to feel inspired from other women. Also for DR, like, thank you for being here. That, that was such an amazing, you know, speech for you, especially for coming out from, um, from a man's point of view. Um, for me, um, a lot of you said that, uh, your mothers, you guys are inspired from you guys' mothers. I would say um, my grandmother inspired me the most. She's like very, very strong, phenomenal, a phenomenal woman. Like she's really amazing. Like there's things like I would say where uh, she would think like I'm very Americanized, but I'm not because I'm trying to learn I'm trying to learn my culture, especially the language. I'm not fluent at all. Like I'll try my best and she'd be like, I would talk to her in American and she's like, hey, you stop watching, like, don't speak to me in um, Arabic. And I'm like, oh my God, like what's this word I need? Like she kind of like puts me in like this, like, like panic attack, like she's going to hit me because she doesn't want me to speak English at all. So it's just like, Frank, like I gotta know my, my language, like, you know, I gotta go to other women who knows, like, I would, like, <laughs> I would go to my cousin or even my little sister who, like, knows more chukis than me. So it's kind of embarrassing. So it's just like, like, I'm like a, the black sheep of the family. Like, I'm the one that's married outside of my um, race. And it's just like, I, I still, I'm, I still got pride. I'm still like, no, I'm chukis. Like, I'm not American just because I'm born in Guam doesn't make me an American, you know, woman. I'm, I'm, I'm just Micronesian chukis. Um, for me, like I, I'm working on myself to becoming a doula. I don't know if you guys know what a doula is, but I like to bring back our native ways, our native ways to giving birth. Um, I don't like the hospital ways at all. If you guys been to hospital births i don't like the american ways i believe in the hospital in america they're like schools for doctors to like the becoming the future doctors here and it's just schools where they're teaching other future doctors on how to work on their patients so it's basically it's just schools and slash business it's not like oh they're taking care of you then this like that i don't 
I don't like hospitals at all. So basically, like, that's what I want to do. I want to help out women. I know women, mothers, especially mothers, I know they go through a lot of um, postpartum depression. I want them, I want to support them in so many levels, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, informationally, and, you know, spiritually sometimes. Um, for me, like, when I first experienced my third, uh, my third birth in um, the Bay Area, um, I had a midwife and she inspired me so much because I didn't experience that type of woman empowerment um, like with so many wo women in the room. Like there was so, it was so great because like I needed that with my other two births. But with, with this one, it was just like, oh my God, this is hella amazing and it inspired me so much. I was like, I'm going to become one of these ladies, you know, I'm going to be that woman in the hospital. I'm going to, you know, hype you up. Like I'm going <laughs> to be there for you 110%. Like it just motivated me to be that person. And when I brought my, um, I guess my, I brought my idea out, like a lot of women are like, oh, we need this. We need you like doing this. But it's just like, I can't, I can't work. I can't help you unless you work yourself first. If you want, if you want to be able to have this kind of birth, like you need to work yourself, like make yourself better inside and out, you know? So also like to learn, um, just to also learn things from our history of birth and, you know, the, how our islands were colonized, how we were, uh, how do you say it? Like, we, we think that birth should be like, you know, scary. I mean, it is, it's not scary, but like, we shouldn't feel like, I'm just there to teach you guys how. Um, uh, she runs a page on Instagram, and I think it's also on Facebook. Uh, it's called uh, The Island Doula or something like that. And she's, uh, she's always looking for stories to share with a wider network. So if anybody has stories, birth stories, or um, stories that you would like uh, Emily to share, uh, feel free to connect with her. Um, she has uh, kids and the way she raises her kids in like natural way is really amazing. Um, she She's bomb and she is gonna be an amazing doula. Um, yeah, I'm glad to that you're here, Emily, if you can hear us. If you can't hear us, I'm glad to have her in our space. Would love her to be my doula let me just say that i'm not even pregnant first of all i don't even have a partner to be pregnant with so <laughs> and if you're hearing this your presence is so valued and we love 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 your story i hope yes. she gets back on Ooh. i was trying so hard to refrain from calling her out because i wanted her to kind of speak um on who she is because it's her job is so important um it's going to be one of the top topics that we're going to go into because uh birth experiences in the states for our people is such a huge thing um it's one of the yeah it's one of the um it's like one of the most uh one of the biggest challenges for women um, in the united states um so we're gonna get into it and i'm glad to have her here um so yeah yeah i think we lost her I'll probably, I'll, one of us will probably send her an email. Yeah, I'll send her a message. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we can carry on. I'm sad that we lost her. Okay. Does anybody else wanna input anything else? Um, we're just about wrapping up right now. I can't believe we went over our time limit. It's amazing. That means the conversation flows. This is a I just just want to put out there that I appreciate being here and I, I love all your affirmations and um, I'm always constantly learning and trying to see what I can do to help our people. My dream is to like be my dream is to like ultimately help people and I want to get myself in the best position possible to do so. So thank you. Thank you all for showing up in this space. Your presence is like beautiful. We all need to hear from each other today and 
I thank the ladies, the two other ladies uh, that helped plan this, Britt and Mimi. Thank you all for the things you do. And to all the women, Sonia, Mel, Maddie that she just left, M, Nadine, Ferna, I don't care how old, how young you are, girl and, and gentlemen, we're doing our thing out here and we love to see it. I love all the different perspective, I think. I think that um, y'all should have a story ready for next month. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I, one last thing to say to Verna. I just want to tell you, sis, that age is nothing but a number. So you have a lot to bring to this table. So don't be shy. Um, you know, do your thing. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for showing up. You know, when we were planning this, I had no idea how this was going to play out. So, you know, of course, we had technical difficulties in the beginning. It took us 15 minutes before we got started. And then, but we actually had people here. So we're just so appreciative that you guys actually showed up. Um, if you guys are, are not okay with being up on, the, on social media, like if we repost pictures of our Zoom or if we, the thing is, we didn't tell you the secret. Did we tell them that we're recording this? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Um, because <sighs> because in... <laughs> so this is recorded because there are people who are not who can't be here because their schedule is not allowing them, but they would love to hear these conversations. So they want us to record this. So we are most likely going to upload this on either IG or Facebook. Um, either on the Micronesian Viral or on Traveling Scato. Um, so if you're absolutely against that, um, I don't know what we're going to do because I don't know how to edit this where I will cut you out, but I'm sorry. And we're just going to have to go to court. You know, like, if anything, you better get yourself a good lawyer because I'm calling the courthouse tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, yeah, for... But yeah, this is recorded and we're most likely going to post it. Um, but yeah, I was going to say like, did we get consent? But we didn't. So we're going to court. But thank you guys for showing up I was today. Don't say that to me. <laughs> for <Yeah>. real. <laughs> I'm aware of that. So when is the next session? Um, we don't have a, a date, but it's, it's going to be next Oh, oh no, actually, no, we do have a date. It's on the 28th. 28th of this month. Also, we will not be going to court. Just, I'm sorry, next event, please show up as your best because I know some people have a thing where, you know, they want to chill in their bed and on Zoom and it's just kind of like, okay, you know. Yeah, I, you can. <laughs> Maybe the next one yeah, she can put it up. IG. This is this is the best place because we're in quarantine. We don't go out much. This is the best place to show your best self. You know what I mean? Oh my god! Exactly. <laughs> when I see that, but it's also like your best self could be your chill self. So, also, um, <laughs> um, if it's not too personal, where are you uh, at right now? Like, where do you stay? Oh, I'm in I'm in Hilo. I just recently moved um, here. So I was in the Bay Area in um, Cali. And then I moved here to buy a house. Finally got a house. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry, I had the technical difficulties on my side. I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. And I don't know if you've heard uh, what we all said, but we were just saying that we appreciate your uh, you being here and I was telling everyone how I was trying my oh. best like put you on the spot but I wanted you to talk about I really wanted you to talk about how uh, you're becoming a doula and how you're mm -hmm. uh, doing stories through your doula page so yeah you guys reach out to M if you guys have any birth stories to share with her or like amazing things that you want to talk to her about oh yeah and my doula page is very very private so <laughs> I don't allow guys oh. in my doula because I put, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I put like my personal stuff in there. So it's just like who I trust. You don't got to like, worry the, about me. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> just accept the following requests. I don't send them. Okay. okay. 
<laughs> again, but you know the rules here. We're definitely going to work. <laughs> <laughs> also, Ev, I love you to be my doula. I'm nowhere close to that, but I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. Let me know, sis. Let me know. It's so amazing. We love to see it. We love that for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're all gonna line up by your by your office, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Um, maybe I, I have a. I I wanted to say something about um, the link for tonight's session. It's I was having a hard time finding the link for this event. Maybe for next time, um, share. I don't know if you share it on social media, but I couldn't find it. So I have oh. to reach out to Nels for this because I I found out about this last minute and I. <laughs> I didn't get the link for to register my name, so maybe next time share it to you know maybe for emails and um, okay. share social media. Yeah, Facebook. same here. <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for that input. So uh, the way it's gonna work um, is there's always gonna be a sign up link, um, and then you'll sign up, and then you'll get the link to go there. Um, so that way we keep things organized, like where we're we don't have con so that we have control over like how it's going to play out um because we're not able to do it webinar style uh so it's always going to be like a, a link will be sent out um for you to sign up and then um after that it'll be followed and it'll be followed with an email um to you with the link on um the zoom um but yeah we'll we'll do better next time this is the first trial and it's like all sorts of chaos but we'll, we promise we'll do better next time. Um, before we go off, though, Anna, I really want to thank uh, Brittany for hosting us and for- Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. She'll come to my room. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, thank you guys so much. <laughs> this is- <laughs> so This is the second time. <laughs> here we go. I just want to continue what I was saying. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Remember, this is recorded. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for putting up with my craziness. You guys have a good night. Bye guys, thank you. Bye.